Yo, what's up, guys? It's Aptrix here. In today's video, we'll be taking a look at the biggest update of the MySwine Windows Emulator for Android. Now, if you guys have never heard about MySwine, it is basically an open source Windows Emulator for Android, which uses native graphics driver for best compatibility compared to any other Windows Emulators for Android. And I don't say this lightly because the driver support is Turnip native as well as Zinc, including Mali GPU as well. Now, MySwine is completely open source, and on its official GitHub, you guys will be able to see MySwine version. 0.2 was released recently and this update brings a lot of changes and bug fixes including performance improvements, games compatibility, better device support and much more. In today's video, we'll be setting it up and I'll be showing you guys its best settings, gameplay and much more. But before getting started, hit that like button, subscribe, turn on all notification as I upload similar videos on my channel. Let's get started. Now to set up MySwine, you need the MySwine application as well as the latest MySwine rootfs file. Now rootfs is very important, this is basically like all the data of the windows emulator and you guys will be able to see the newest version of rootfs was released about two days ago it contains all the latest changes and bug fixes once that's done make sure to add this emulator on your android device afterwards simply tap on it and make sure to set it up so here we'll just cut and enable this option go back and tap on continue the first prompt that you will get is to select the root fs of MySwine windows emulator once you select it from the directory where you have stored it you will be able to see it will start processing this emulator and this is the most important step by the way there have also been lot of improvements in terms of adding on-screen touch controls performance overlay new driver support new dxvk wrappers and much more so now i can say that this is actually an almost complete windows emulator for android it is nowhere as good as game hub or let's say win later android at least for now in terms of compatibility of games but it can do the job it can do most of the things that any other windows emulator for android can do anyways let's wait until the wine prefix has been created this is the most important step and after waiting for few seconds you'll be able to see the ui right here the ui has been made much better now in the version 2.0 of my spine you'll be able to see all of the information in its about section and i am very happy to say that this windows emulator uses the latest wine 10.0 version which is pretty amazing the latest greatest wine version we'll just go ahead and go to settings and as far as i can see the ui has been redesigned the first thing which we'll do is go to settings and here in wine settings make sure to enable wine easing for better performance once that has been done now we can also choose cpu affinity which wasn't really present before so that's pretty amazing we'll just go ahead and go back go to sound settings we can even select pulse audio sync so we'll keep it as default in terms of display settings aspect ratio can be native which is pretty amazing like we'll go with native aspect ratio uh, display resolution you can go all the way up to your default display resolution that is very amazing and you will be able to see my native resolution i think is 21 is to 9 aspect ratio so we'll go with 756 by 1663 display resolution enable or disable ram counter is present along with cpu usage by default inside this emulator the features list has been completely loaded let's go to driver settings and here in terms of dx wrappers you get dxvk but in terms of dxvk versions you guys will be able to see a lot of dxvk wrappers have been added now as we are using snapdragon 8 elite processor for today's video this is my realme gt7 pro i'll be going with the best dx wrapper which is supported on this android device that is dxvk 1.7.2 in my opinion as far as i have tested in win later android dxvk doesn't really matter completely in terms of compatibility with processors so anything will be good to go in my opinion other than that you can enable or set fps limit by default fps limit has been set at 60 fps which means your game will not get more than 60 fps this is great feature if you have high-end android devices it will uh, decrease the heating issues if you have a mali gpu android device you can also choose wine d3d version even the latest wine d3d 10.0 has been added if this video reaches 150 likes i'll test out my swine emulators 2.0 on my mali gpu android device once that has been done we can even add environment variables which is pretty amazing but we'll keep everything as default for now let's go back from general settings and here in terms of driver manager this is very important as my swine supports native graphics driver mesa turnip driver 25.0 should not be used we need to use the mesa android wrapper as you guys can see you need to double tap to select the graphics driver and i have selected the mesa android wrapper make sure to choose this for best compatibility across unsupported snapdragon processors if you have snapdragon 4 gen 1 processor or above you can go with mesa turnip driver normal version it will provide you the best performance and compatibility 
Once that's done, we'll just go ahead and take a look at the Box64 preset management section where you will be now able to import Box64 presets or even edit the default preset. For example, we can change the big block, dynamic and everything else like we do in uh, the WinLater Android. For example, say flex, we'll set it to zero and we'll keep everything as default. It is good for compatibility. Once that has been done, you also get Wine Manager where you can check out all the Wine versions that you have added. You can even check out Box64 where the latest Box64 0.3 is being used. That's pretty amazing, 0.3.3. Once everything has been done though in terms of best settings, now we'll need to map our virtual controllers. Now if we just go ahead and tap on edit, you'll be able to see finally black screen has been added. This is very important because previously there was white screen and all of these touch controls are also white. So none of them were actually being shown. But this is a bit disappointing, I'm not going to lie. The developer should at least be providing a virtual gamepad preset. Now here I have finished setting up some of the basic on-screen touch controls and you might be wondering once we add the buttons where actually can we edit the button now this is another problem which the developer has not solved basically there is a button right here in the corner which you can tap it doesn't look visible because of the black background and black button so the developer should probably make uh, the button color maybe white anyways here you'll need to choose the button such as escape enter right space etc so you can do this on your own spare time i'll select v for view and yeah, I have created these buttons. Once that has been done, we'll go back and we'll press the exit button. Once that has been done, now that we have set up our on-screen touch controls, if we just go ahead and go to the container section or shortcut section, you guys will be able to see we have our first container that we can create by tapping the plus button. So here I'll tap on plus and you can create another container if you want to. But for now, we'll simply press the desktop option and launch our my swine windows emulator for android and here we go guys immediately you will be able to see our windows emulator has launched in the full screen aspect ratio as we are using native options and if we just go ahead and swipe back we also get the open keyboard option fps limit option as well as open slash close on screen touch controls overlay now before we test out gta 5 in this version of my spine windows emulator we'll go to the start section and then direct text test and just go ahead and try out a direct text 9 test this will show us if our graphics driver is being rendered properly and here we go as you will be able to see our direct text 9 test will be successfully rendered and we are getting straight up 60 fps because there is an fps limiter it won't exceed over 60 fps anyways let's just go ahead and close this now that our graphics are being rendered we know that this emulator will render graphics without any issues let's just go ahead and try out gta 5 as usual to see if it works or not i'll just go ahead and launch the gta 5 launcher and let's find out we'll also tap the start button afterwards go to applications and task manager and here as you guys can see gta 5 has successfully booted so we don't really need the task manager i'll just go ahead and close it and as you guys will be able to see, our game is about to start. And here you will also be able to see the FPS bar. Now I have heard that GTA 5 actually crashes inside this Windows emulator. I am not sure if it will work or not. But if it works then you will be able to see it right there. I will also enable the overlay. So we have some on-screen touch controls. And I don't know why this <laughs> on-screen touch control in the center appeared. Let's wait until the game loads. Hopefully it loads. Hopefully it starts. But unfortunately I think it has forced stopped. As you guys can see, the game is stuck so we'll just go ahead and swipe back and restart our container let's try out a different game i have launched assassin's creed rogue i'll just go ahead and go here and make sure to enable the overlay once again now you'll be able to see for some reason the aspect ratio is stretched and that might be because of our native graphics resolution nonetheless as you guys can see the game has successfully launched so maybe there is an issue with gta 5 only but we'll just go ahead and tap on the start new game option and enter our name once the game actually starts i'll be changing settings to make sure it runs in a full screen display and here we go guys the beginning cutscene of assassin's creed rogue i'm not able to see the fps bar at the top left corner but as far as i can see it is running super smooth just take a look at this straight up 60 fps without even needing to think too much just take a look at how smooth it's being rendered and the graphics quality is also pretty amazing only if the aspect ratio wasn't messed up i am pretty sure that this cutscene would be looking much better but don't worry we'll fix the aspect ratio as soon as this cutscene is over so here we go our game has successfully started and the cpu usage is only 30 percent here we go i have changed the aspect ratio to 16 is to 9 and now just take a look at how smooth this game is actually running now you'll be able to see that the joystick control is actually not working in this game 
so i do believe the developers should have taken some effort to create a pre configured on screen touch controller and this simulator would have received like almost 9 out of 10 in terms of customization as well as ease of use of this simulator anyways now i'll just need to create another virtual axis We'll select it. We'll tap here, and we'll need to assign the W A S D keys for this. Once that's done, now you'll be able to see we are able to control our character in Assassin's Creed Rogue. And just take a look at how smooth this game is actually working on my Android device. This is strictly 60 FPS, no question asked. We'll just go ahead and jump, and as you guys can see, Assassin's Creed Rogue running on our Android device inside this Windows emulator for Android. Anyways, that's going to be it for today's video. Thanks for watching. Hit that like button, subscribe, turn on all notification. Let me know in the comment section down. below what do you guys think about the mice wine version 2.0 i'll see you guys next time thanks for watching peace out